There he is. The head, oh, look who's here. The head carpenter. The head carpenter. There we go. Wow. James is going to give us a little review. I'm walking down the main corridor and we're going to start with the great room or family room, which is to our right here. Okay, James. As you can see, the project is more or less complete. Uh, just about everything's been put in. They've been decorating the space. Uh, this is the family room. It's a wide open space. It's got plenty of room. Uh, we've added a lot of special details in this particular room because this was going to be the, uh, the area that the family was going to spend most of their time. Uh, one of the features that we added to the room were these built-in cabinets, which we have two of, one on this side of the room, and then over across on this side, we have another one. Uh, these cabinets were originally only supposed to be a few inches deep, but after the customer thought about it, we decided to sacrifice some of the room space because the room is so big and use that space for storage. And as you can see, they've made pretty good use of the space up until this point, or at this point. The shelves are uh, about 15 inches deep and they're plenty big to hold toys and games and a bunch of other things. These units were, uh, were handmade by uh, Marty and myself right here on the floor and uh, then they were set into the, into the wall and they were made with a product called melamine which is a uh, prefabricated material, a pre-finished material that uh, is very similar to a Formica product. Uh, down along over here, when we decided to extend the depth of the cabinets, we wound up with some excess space over the top of the doorway, and we chose to put in a uh, little soffit up there, which has some very interesting lighting in it. Uh, just a little strip light up there that's going to be used for some uh, pieces of art or whatever the customer may choose to use the space for. Uh, one of the exciting features of this space down here is that it has a really fantastic view. Even though we're down in the basement in the lowest level in the house, we're still probably uh, 50 or 100 feet above most of the other people that live in this town. The view is really what you'd call breathtaking uh, for a basement, for sure. All right. Moving along, over on this side of the room, uh, we have the fireplace, which we were involved in partially. Uh, we had a tile installer come in and actually do the finish work, but we had to do all the prep work. This was just a, a cinder block uh, uh, facing here, and we had to finish it off and get it prepared for the tile people. Uh, we also built a little uh, hearth down here at the bottom, and uh, we were looking for a very clean look down here. We didn't want to overemphasize the fireplace, and I think it worked out pretty much the way we had planned. Uh, with things like the fireplace and these built-ins around me, this widescreen projection TV sort of gets dwarfed in this room, but you know, in the average person's living room, it would be uh, you know, much too big for most people to handle. Moving down along, past the fireplace, we have the trophy case, which was another built-in unit that was made with a material similar to the built-ins that we showed you earlier. Uh, but this is all done with glass doors and glass shelves. Uh, and then, additionally, this is also backlit with a dimmer switch to highlight whatever uh, trophies or art are going to be displayed inside of this cabinet. Uh, again, this unit was designed to accommodate the, uh, the greatest use of space where the cabinets to the right are about 18 inches deep and the cabinets over here to the left are only about 12 inches deep. But what we did again was make the best use of the space that was available. Uh, as you'll find as we walk around here, we left uh, very little space uh, untended. And also one of the other features that we have in this room which isn't being utilized at this point, and it was probably uh, my biggest labor of love in this space, 
somewhere about where my foot is, is an outlet in the floor underneath the carpet. And uh, although it took me two or three days to get through the concrete in order to get that wire down there, uh, it, uh, it did finally go in, although the customer has chosen not to use it at this point in time, unfortunately. Uh, if we can just pan up for a second, we can get a better look at this ceiling, which is a, uh, a custom drop-in ceiling with a very delicate uh, beveled edge on all of the tiles. Uh, it really brightens up the room, and although it's a, it's a block tile ceiling and some people don't like suspended ceilings, I think uh, this really uh, shows how attractive a, a tiled ceiling could be. Uh, we can now walk around over into the next space, which would be the hall area or entry area. Originally, this door right in front of me opened in the opposite direction. And because of the design of the room, it became necessary for us to turn this door around, which we uh, wound up doing. Uh, this door basically leads to the upstairs living space. And, uh, okay. There we go. Like that. Uh, and basically that leads to upstairs, and this door will probably remain open most of the time now that the... Uh, lower part of the house, I don't like calling it a basement anymore, uh, has become more of a living space. Uh, this area is just a, a storage closet, which was always here, and of course it's for storage as usual, as most houses have. Uh, and then we can move along into the rest of the hall area. In this hall area, we wanted to do something quite unique. And what we uh, chose to do was to put in these little soffits, which you'll see as soon as the camera pans around. Soffits here were basically just an afterthought. We are originally just going to have a 45 degree angle in these corners. And uh, as a second thought, we decided to just break into the corners a little and create a little nook to, uh, again, display some, uh, some art or whatever. Uh, we put some mini hi-hats in. There's one in this corner. And then there's another that's identical to that in the opposite corner, which you might be able to pick up on screen. And again, uh, we have dimmer controls that control the lighting in that area. Uh, eventually, the customer is going to put a piece of mirrored glass down here at the bottom to uh, protect this ledge and also to illuminate the entire area. Now we can move along into the bedroom area, which is the other room in the basement conversion. There's the lights. Uh, this room has a slight peach tone. And it was a, a real nice choice by the customer. Uh, I don't know where we can begin, but we can basically just take a quick pan of the room to start and just work our way into this corner, which is probably the uh, the best part of the room, because I built it, obviously. Uh, but basically what we have here is a little, this is a wooden built-in that, uh, again, I, I basically built at home and then assembled the parts when I got here. Uh, it has a very interesting feature that I, I tried to develop down here where we had three distinct doors, but we wanted to have as much open space as we could to get into the cabinets. So I created these pop-out doors, which open, and when you pop out the second door, the style in the middle of the door disappears, uh, which was a feature that we incorporated to uh, improve the look of the cabinet. One of the, uh, once again, the, one of the features here is the, uh, the good use of space that we made in this cabinet area. Uh, first, we tried to keep this line uh, traveling all around right through across to the, the window on that side of the room. Uh, basically, what we had here were the chimney, which is right behind this for the, the fireplace, uh, the uh, zero clearance fireplace, which is directly behind this space. And uh, because of the way the flue ran, we didn't have enough room to have deep shelves up on the top of the cabinet, but we had plenty of room for deep shelves down near the bottom. So basically, the front of the cabinet is all 
the same dimension, but the depth of the shells change as space allowed. Uh, so once again, we you know we made best use of the space. The center area is designed to accommodate uh, standard 19-inch television, and we already have cable jacks in there with telephone jacks and uh, 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 power cords and holes put in to accommodate uh, a stereo system or whatever that might eventually be put in over on that side. Uh, over here, we have our mirrored closet doors, which might not come up too well on the camera. Uh, Right now, the closet is uh, not being used for clothing, but it's also lighted. And uh, eventually, that could be used uh, down here for the guest bedroom or whatever to uh, accommodate the people that are staying here. We can uh, move around here to see that, although, again, we're down in a basement, we have plenty of nice uh, light that comes in here during the day. Uh, the windows are nice and low, so it certainly doesn't give you a feeling that you're in a basement, which is a real nice feature for this room. You're not really uh, what you'd call you know, down in a dungeon. Uh, this window is the famous window that we heard the cry for help out of, uh, but that's a story for another day, I'm sure. Uh, as we spin around, we can go back uh, over here, and I can just show you some of the features that are incorporated throughout the house and also down here in the basement, uh, including an intercom system that travels throughout the house, uh, heat sensors which are located in every room in the home that uh, automatically adjust the uh, climate within each living space. Uh, along with all the other things we did down here, we also put in heat registers uh, in all the rooms, uh, supplying heat and air conditioning down here in this area, uh, and all of these things are computer controlled uh, to uh, make living as comfortable as possible. Uh, down here we have a central vacuum jack which we also install. That's a little bit of what it sounds like. Uh, the, uh, let's see, well the central vacuum is over back in the storage area that we'll take a look at a little bit later on. Uh, as we move down along the side, just, just to, again, uh, we haven't really looked at where these things are coming from, but as if you can pick this up on the camera, we have some angled walls here. Uh, the walls are running at 45 degree angles, and it was quite a challenge to get these edges and angles spackled properly, but we eventually found a way to do it. And uh, a little later, we'll understand more or less why we put these angles in. They were they are put in for a purpose and a reason. Uh, this space out here is the dressing area. And again, we, we show more mirrors and uh, some lighting above. Uh, this room has the same uh, ceiling texture as the other room had. Uh, this ceiling travels throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, this basement area. And you can see by the way that I'm reaching that, we're looking at about an eight and a half foot ceiling in this room, and it was close to a nine foot ceiling in the other room, which is really a nice feeling for being down in a, down in a basement area. The, uh, the countertop here that you're looking at is made of a product called Avonite, which uh, was actually recycled from the kitchen countertops upstairs because uh, some of the, the larger pieces up there had some uh, problems with stress cracking. Uh, so a customer chose to recycle that material down here, and it was really a nice choice because it, it fit the space uh, very nicely. Over on uh, this wall, uh, originally we had a medicine cabinet in here, and uh, although we went through a lot of pain to frame it out and install it, after we put it up, it really didn't look as though it belonged. And so uh, the customer went along and chose to have these uh, custom mirrors put in which really uh, emphasizes the area much better than the uh, medicine cabinet did initially. Uh, down here below the sink, I know no one likes to look at plumbing, but uh, down here below the sink, because that's such an un unsightly area, we're planning on installing a, another cabinet made of that melamine. So that's what an afterthought then, right? Right. Basically, it's an afterthought, and it, uh, we'll uh, get to it in the next couple of weeks. So uh, it wasn't in the original plan. As we move along here, we move down into the, the main bathroom. 
which is very white and bright. I don't know how well this will pick up, but uh, one of the handy features that we installed in this room, which was another good use of wasted space, was we needed this half wall in order to accommodate a clean-out, which is behind this grill. Uh, the grill is basically covered up the clean-out, and also to define the space of the, uh, the tub area, the tub enclosure. Uh, so what we decided to do here was put in a, a neat little feature, which is basically a magazine rack. And uh, it's a good place to have some reading material when someone is uh, pondering the day. Communicating uh, here, with here nature. Here we have some of the original sketches of the basement area, which are still here. Uh, and this unit could be removed uh, if it was necessary uh, to get in there for plumbing work or whatever. Then uh, up on the top of the cat, we uh, built this little shelf unit which was uh, just another detail. We didn't want to have a, a solid wall going up here to, to make the room look very claustrophobic, so we decided on something that was a little more open and introducing a little bit more chrome into the room because all of the fixtures in the room were already chrome. And uh, I think it was a really nice choice. It, uh, it just does the job you know, to, uh, to find the room a little better. As we uh, move along into the tub enclosure, uh, it's probably not that easy to pick up on film, but believe me, in person, it's quite dramatic. But there's some really beautiful border tiling here. And that was one of the reasons to raise this, this uh, partition wall up. The partition wall was originally about 8 or 10 inches lower, but it became necessary to raise that wall in order to accommodate the tiling design, which uh, I think was well worth the effort. Uh, over to my right, it's uh, in the process of being finished. We have a, a stall shower here. There's lighting in the shower as well. And that entire enclosure has also been uh, tiled. Uh, this was one of, the, uh, one of the points for discussion between the, uh, the two homeowners, where uh, one wanted a shower and the other one didn't. So the compromise was to put the shower in, but not to uh, go too crazy on it. So they chose on a, a prefabricated unit, which was a lot less expensive than a full tile, but it still uh, does the job. Uh, the man of the house someday hopes to be able to install a door on this back wall uh, so he can walk through to a, a gymnasium, which he would really like to construct on the other side of this wall. And that was his main reason for having a shower back in this area. But uh, we'll all have to wait and see if that ever comes to be. Well, we, you failed to mention that we pre-framed it for the door. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this, so the, area, the area beyond the, behind this wall has already been framed out to accommodate a door. And uh, all we need to do is remove the sheetrock and the framing would already be there. We could just install the door pretty easily. It's just an opposing view of the same room. We can uh, move around now to one of the uh, one of the, the highlights down here. I guess we can call it. If you can call a bathroom a highlight. Basically, in this space, the customer was looking for a very unique type of a uh, powder room. And up on the first level, uh, she has a powder room that actually has curved walls, which is really dramatic because the walls are all mirrored out. So rather than going with curves down here, we chose to go with angles. And, as you've seen in some of the other built-ins and the other walls around here, we've had a lot of 45 degree angles. So what we decided to do in this space was to create an octagon. So we have an eight-sided room here, which, you know, the room has eight walls and uh, a whole bunch of different angles. Uh, the room is decorated basically in gray, and the customer even found a, an octagon-shaped mirror, which uh, basically complements the space. Uh, so for being a powder room, it's, it's quite, a, quite a nice space. The, uh, the toilet, as you can see, is on an angle. Uh, and we had considered putting the sink on an angle, but then changed our mind after a while because it was getting to be a little out of hand at that point. 
All right, well, back in this area is the uh, storage area, which might eventually turn into the gymnasium that I had mentioned earlier. Uh, this space is currently just uh, being used for storage. Uh, it's the utility room that houses uh, all of the computer operated uh, facilities in this house, which include an alarm system, uh, fire alarm systems, uh, central heating and air conditioning systems, uh, dehumidifiers, humidifiers, you name it, it's enclosed someplace in one of these boxes. Uh, back in this corner, the uh, customer had concern on that central vacuum that you heard a little bit earlier. Uh, when they had guests staying over, they didn't want to uh, drown them out at 8 o'clock in the morning when someone turned the vacuum cleaner on. So we constructed this cabinet, which is uh, done in uh, double wall sheetrock along with double wall uh, sound barrier, which is a, a, a sound deadening material to try to keep the, uh, the vacuum as quiet as we possibly can. Uh, we also added some pegboard up on the walls uh, so that the customer could get some of, their, uh, some of the things uh, that are just hanging around up off the floor to try to make better use of the space once again. Uh, back behind here, we have the, uh, the uh, opening that gives us access to the plumbing behind the tub that you saw on the other side of the wall. And right over here is where the door might eventually go to provide access into this space. This is right behind the bathroom that we just looked at a few minutes ago. Okay, well, that's about it for tonight. I think uh, we'll create a little bit more dramatic mood here with all of the dimmers that we installed. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our little film. I know we certainly enjoyed preparing it for you. Have a nice night.